Okay, and, and now we're back to us. Okay. All right. <clears throat> anyway, so good evening, folks. Uh, my name's Joe White, and uh, you've uh, found A Life in the Arts, uh, sponsored by the Masterwork Foundation, in which we have conversations with people uh, about how exactly you do that thing, the life in the arts. Um, and so this evening, our guest is Robert Lupone, uh, who is an actor, dancer, uh, I guess producer since uh, with MCC Theater and um, someone who has made a life in the arts. And so we're going to be talking with him, but first, as they say, um, I'm going to turn you over to our foundation's executive director, Todd Whitley, to tell you a little bit about the people uh, who've helped us put this on. Thank you, Joe. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight for this, the launch of our spring series of A Life in the Arts. Uh, the Masterwork Music and Art Foundation has been around for over 60 years supporting excellence in the arts. And today the organization funds a number of grants there are competitive awards, there are community arts awards, and there is a premier award going out to an individual, an award of $10,000. We also offer free classes and this series right here, Life in the Arts, dedicated to people who have committed them, their lives to the arts. And tonight, we are very fortunate to have an extraordinary and amazing person. So Robert Lapone is an incredible talent and I'm, and a good friend of mine. And I want to say thank you, Bobby, for agreeing to be interviewed tonight. And Joe, take it away. Okay. Uh, it's my pleasure. And you know, I love it. So thank you for that. The, um, well, I've been looking at both your Wikipedia page and your MCC theater page, which, um, it has some amazing and great stuff on it, particularly. I uh, have to compliment you on your new digs. Um, that yeah. is a gorgeous theater. And um, I'm, that's, uh, that's a piece of success in a different thing. But your um, Wikipedia is, says that you're an actor and artistic director and dancer. Um, the thing that I was looking, you know, you studied dance with Anthony Tudor, Jose Limon, and Martha Graham. Those are my teachers at Juilliard, yes. Wow. I mean, I started, I started I, actually, I started in the sixth grade uh, with the PTA dance, after school dance. I started and uh, I got into it because my sister was performing in a, with a hula skirt. And at that time, they had lights with, with wheels. And so the whole skirt would change colors. And I said to my mother, I wanted to wear that skirt. And she said, well, the only way you wear that skirt is if you, uh, if you, what do you call it, go to dance class. So I started this sixth grade. And at 15, uh, my uh, local teacher said, I know nothing more I can do for you. Go to New York. And so I ended up at Martha Graham on scholarship. Uh, and I ended up at Juilliard. And at Juilliard, literally, my teachers were Anthony Tudor, Jose Lemon, and Martha Graham. And we did, <laughs> excuse me, we did their, their, their pieces at school. Uh, and I would say that I, of, of the three, I was very much a Tudor protege. I just thought, here was the cat's meow. His, didn't know it at the time, but his particular take on ballet was psychological, <laughs> which was so different than Balanchine, which was the other school of thought. And uh, I was fascinated by that because he only, not only did he, teach the steps that we had to learn, he also gave me a reason to do the steps, which was interesting to me. Mm. Well, because you then have actual characters. Yes, so that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Now, I wasn't the ballet dancer that I thought I was, but in any event, had I, had I stayed with him, he said I could be the next premier dancer of America with a lot of hard work, he used to say. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> excuse me, but what happened is I hit my leg, 
and I injured myself. And then West Side Story, 1968, was the Jerome Robbins um, revival. And that's why I got into show business. When I saw West Side Story on this big screen, I just thought that was the cat's meow. And so I asked Tudor, I said, well, what should I do? And he said, well, you should, you know, you should, well, you know, you should come to the Met and work with me and become the next premier dancer of America. And this was after I had taken a class with Rudolf Nureyev, Nureyev and I thought I was the cat's meow and he just, he just, <laughs> forget about it. I didn't, it, I mean, his leg was straight, his toes were pointed, my leg was crooked, my toes weren't pointed, it was ridiculous. And so that was a really come up in for me, <coughs> excuse me, in taking class with him. But in any event, uh, maybe he, then he said, well, maybe you should go to West Side Story. So in, indeed, I did. I went to West Side Story and I had made the decision at that time to to actually do dance and choruses and learn how to act. So I started uh, taking acting lessons uh, and did Broadway choruses for like five years. And then I got my first acting job when I was 27. Well, I was going to say you studied with uh, one, another legend, uh, Uta Hagen. Yeah. And um, so um, that's a good way to get set on the right course. Um, These people are phenomenal. You know, they don't they don't just talk about the technique. They talk to the back of your head. Do you know what I mean? Mm, it's, yes. It's a whole different thing. And so when you're dealing with somebody like that, who is profound, profound in their instruction and their craft, their understanding of the craft, and what am I, I'm 20, 21, 22, 23. I think, again, I'm the cat's meow, but I have no idea what I'm doing. And the, the kind of clarity and the perception and the, the technique that, they, that I, I learned um, was phenomenal and profound because I still use it today. Mm. The, um, the way, Todd wrote some questions for me to ask you, and I will use some of them. Maybe. <laughs> anyway, no, but uh, I think the um, the one question is, so besides Uta Hagen, are there other acting teachers who influenced you? I mean, because I've, she is kind of associated with a particular school of, of and discipline of and technique, but um, uh, so where else, uh, but most of the people I've met who actually have lives in the arts um, pick up from more places than one. Well, that's the way it used to be. It used, there was no, at my, and during my day, there was no MFA programs where you would get trained really comprehensively. In my <clears> day, <throat> it was shoe leather on the streets and going from class to class. Right. So in that time, when I, I studied with Clyde Vinson, who was my speech teacher, I studied with Lee Strasberg and became a member of the Actors Studio. I studied with, uh, uh, who else did I study with? Uh, ooh, I can't remember his name. Uh, mm, sorry, I can't remember his name. The guy who repeats, a oh, Meisner. I said to study the Meisner technique. Mm -hmm. uh, with Freddie, I can't remember his name. Anyway, the teacher who was well known for that. And so I did, I studied various techniques. Mm -hmm. At once a speech lesson, because my body was evolved from all the dance. So it was very aware physically. And the way that I broke into acting was but through my body, through physicality. Right. I became, that was really evolved. What wasn't evolved was an emotional point of view, which took me a long time to learn and to break down the actual uh, reliance on the body. So that was only part of the expression as opposed to the full expression. Um, and so that took time. But um, I basically learned the trade. And I got experience working on the trade, you know, in my 20s. And I actually landed my first role when I was 27. And I happened to, and I, and I happened to have won the Joseph Jefferson Award in Chicago for the Tooth of the Crime as my first gig. So it was like, okay. you know, wow, right? It was quite something. The, um, I, you know, and then, so somewhere along there uh, came a chorus line. Yeah, that was, I was 27. So that was actually, so I got, I actually, my first gig was before that because Chorus Line was when I was 27. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. And so my agent said, there's a Michael Bennett, this, this guy named Michael Bennett, this director named Michael Bennett was auditioning dancers at the public theater. Would I like to go, go um, audition? Said, oh, well, of course, but I'm not a dancer anymore. Well, let's go audition anyway. So I auditioned and uh, I got the job. And then with the chorus line, which was an interesting experience, I was cast as Al. 
And in the story that I was cast as, I was the straight dancer who was homophobic. I was married to Renee. And in the course of the audition, there was a fist fight between me and Greg. And that was one of the work, that was the first workshop. And then I don't know when it happened. This is four years ago. But anyway, all of a sudden, that whole storyline was dropped. Mm. And, and for three days, uh, I didn't have a character <laughs> and I did nothing. I just sat on those on the sidelines. <coughs> Excuse me, I just sat on the sidelines. And then uh, Barry Bostwick at the time was playing chorus line, and we heard via the root grapevine that he was leaving. He quit. So there was no more any Zach. And I went up to Michael and I said, I can do that. He said, Oh, yeah, sure, sure. And so um, he auditioned me during lunch hour. And then when the cast came back, I did the number in front of them and I got the job. They cast mm -hmm. me as Zach and all of a sudden I became Zach in a chorus line and the rest is history. Yeah. Well, history, um, I believe there was a Tony Award nomination in, in that was. history. Yes, there was indeed. But, which is... On the back of the house, no less. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the other... Uh, uh, there's something here that uh, that Todd mentioned, which is uh, that uh, the chorus line actually supported uh, the development of the public theater. Oh my God! Yeah, we we saved the public theater. I mean, Joe Papp had like three <laughs> particular shows that saved the public theater. I think one of them was Hair. Mm -hmm. One of them was a chorus line, and there was another one which I can't don't know who, but I know there was a third one. And I think with Chorus Line, they made so much money, he renovated, I think, the entire building. Right. Which, to this day, is still getting renovated, I'm sure, but it was a major dent. Um, everything is always getting renovated in New York. You're right. <laughs> if, um, if, if we ever stopped paying the carpenters, the whole thing would just collapse. Oh, oh, <laughs> sure. But, but anyway, the... Um, so... I guess the question is that when you got that hire, did you have any inkling about what that would become? No, not at all. Uh, the only time I got, I knew something like that was happening was that <clears throat> the public theater during the show or after the show, rather, you'd come out and there would be like dozens of limos lined up outside. Wow. That was that was the thing that made me realize, my goodness, this is this is quite something. You know, see, I wasn't part of that. See, I was not on the line, so I was not on the Bloomingdale's towel. You know, I was I was extracurricular. I was outside of that that adulation, which I, I was okay with, um, but I was not part of that. So it was the cast and Zen Zach. Do you know what I mean? Okay, <laughs> that kind of experience. But I honestly did not know. We did not know. I remember Manny Azenbergs. Oh, this will, Manny Azenbergs saying this will run for five years when we were in Broadway. And I was so flabbergasted that he could say that it would run for five years. But mm. indeed, it did. Yeah. Um, so we didn't know, have any idea. But then we became the toast of the town and, uh, you know, became heralded and, you know, on the Bloomingdale towels, the course went for the towel. I mean, they were, they just okay. marked the hell out of it. So that's what we did. Well, listen, uh, it's, it's good to be in something they can market that way. Sure, sure. sure. <laughs> Gainfully employment, it's a good thing. Yes, indeed. Uh, the, um, I don't know. So is, are there any stories you'd like to share from, from that show? What an interesting, I mean, there's so much to say and there's so little time, you know what okay. I mean? Okay, well, so there much you go. To say. I mean, yeah, there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of stories. Um, I did not know that I was playing the man who conceived, wrote and directed a chorus line. So I would make some acting choices and uh, he would be incensed by my acting choices or he wouldn't. <laughs> okay. I had no idea why. <clears throat> yes. Uh, I also did not know that he, you know, was having an affair with Donna who was playing Cassie. And so I was like demanding or talking about the scene from my point of view versus her point of view. And there was, I would say, a favoritism, let me put it that way, politely towards Donna, which I didn't understand at all. Uh, uh. <laughs> and at all, but then to, to find out he married her, to find out they were having an affair while this was going on and yeah. to find out that he conceived, choreographed and directed it, you know, it's okay. all. Um, um, all, all news to me. Yeah. Uh, story, the stories is the stories was well, the real story is everybody worked very hard in that show. Um, oh, you you could see it. 
Yeah, I mean, I was I, I, I was there. You could see that. And Donna, bless her, did that that dance eight times a week. She never missed a, a performance, and that was exhausting. That dance, eight minutes, and then have to sing, et cetera, et cetera. And so, it, it got her a standing ovation. But it really was at, at what cost, I would say. Um, but you know, the cast worked very hard, and I, to their credit, you know, they there's very few times. In the course that I did a chorus line where I stopped the show, literally, and went out of sequence because I felt that the cast was not giving me due, due honor as the director of the piece. <laughs> right. So in going out, of order, uh, going out of order, all of a sudden you could see the cast's shoulders rise because they didn't know what I was going to do next. And all of a sudden it became very present moment, very spontaneous. <laughs> and I would call somebody out that wasn't in line and they would have to step out of the line. And they would go, <laughs> excuse me, they would go, <coughs> excuse me, they go, um, I said, no, nah, never mind. I want, never mind. I'll, I'll take you now, Tommy, or something like that. So it was very much, <laughs> and their heartbeats had raised. And I did that like maybe three or four times in the course of the year and a half that I did the show, only because it's so hard to keep that physicality alive and at the same time keep that emotion alive where you desperately need that job. Yes. Uh, a year later, it's not so hard. It's not so exciting or well, you, well you already got the job yes exactly <laughs> no the I, the other thing in seeing that show i mean all those years ago i was a uh, i designed lighting uh and other also directed back then in regional theater and uh the one thing that was electrifying was the lighting design oh yeah because it physically could not have been done with traditional broadway equipment yeah. yeah, it actually, had to be all the new stuff. It was. As a matter of fact, I had a story with you about that. So this was like computers came into to the mm -hmm. into their into their own during a chorus line, and all of a sudden they, they were using computers. And <coughs> excuse me, I had this call <laughs> one night. I forget who it was, President somebody, Ford, or Ray. I don't know who it was. One of the presidents at that time, I can't remember right now, came to the show, and with them. Came with that person and his wife came all the secret service. Now we've got computers in the, all over the place, right? Right. Light running off computers, not knowing that the secret service wireless, whatever their communication band was, was confusing the band of the computer wireless. So, <laughs> so in the course of that show, lights would pop up for no reason and they would go out and other lights would come up and pop up for no reason and go out. And we still did the show, but nobody knew why that was happening. The next night, when the Secret Service was gone, the lights were back as, as normal. So we I, realized that it was the Secret Service. Uh, you've been jammed by the Secret Service. Yeah. But so uh, anyway, the um, no, that was an amazing, amazing show. So um, you taught at the New School, the MFA drama program. Yeah. But actually, more interesting to me is what you're doing now. You've uh, been running the MCC Theater, one of the uh, the triumvirate that runs it for, what, over 30 years now? Yeah, 36 years. I uh, So as I became an actor, I also then liked the status of where the actor was placed in terms of the totem pole of show business in New York or theater in New York. Yes. So I wanted to do something about it. So I started my own theater. Bernie Telsey was my partner at that time in terms of putting it together. And Will Cantler came like four years later and the three of us sort of like said, we're going to create a theater. And so 1986, we went legal, nonprofit, uh, and we started the, the theater and it was very much a club. It was very much, you know, 25 actors, five directors and five playwrights got together once a week or twice a week in whatever space we could find for free. And we would work. And the idea was to create plays and then put them on not knowing anything about anything, how much they cost, where the lights come from, how to do a set, none of that stuff. And in the course of 36 years, you learn the job. We've, uh, the three yeah. of us have been together, we're the founders and we've been together since 1986. And I've known Bernie since 1981, doing MCC, doing new plays. And, you know, we were, we were what do you call it? Uh, we, we had a home once for a while at Nat Horn and then we've been vagabonds. And then we were at the Lortel for 10 years just renting the theater for a season, but never, never had a home. Right. In January 19, we finally accomplished the $29 million to build the home that we now have on 52nd and 10th, which encompasses two theaters and studios and offices. And 
we're still doing the same thing. Okay. <laughs> Working on the place. Yeah. I have and, the same frog in the throat. So all right. yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> and we and we um what do you call it? We're still doing the same thing. We're, we haven't changed our mission. We're working on new plays, emerging artists. We have an education program for young kids. And uh, it's it's been very rewarding. It's been nerve wracking. You know, the deficit, the surplus, the deficits. Nonprofit in New York is not easy, particularly when you're starting from the ground up, as I <laughs> did. But, but at the same time, it's been very rewarding because it's now recognized, I think, I re you know better than I, but it's recognized as one of the premier off-Broadway theaters in New York City. Well, you're like one of the, you, you become an institution, which yeah. that's yeah. a, yeah. that is a, that's a wonderful thing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, we're, having, we're having problems with being a club versus being an institution. <laughs> you know, that's, yeah. we, we haven't, it's, we all haven't made that transition, but yes, that is exactly the fact. Institution is where we are. That's, and and I, I don't know, people should go to the MCC Theater's website and uh, the, your new home is gorgeous. Thank you. Andrew Berman was our architect and he rode us through the entire process of design and construction and we're very happy with it. Very happy so, with it. Is there, a, is there a current project that you'd like to tell us about? Well, we have two projects. One is uh, Which Way to the Stage, written by Anna Negrera and directed by Mark Don Donahue, which is a story about uh, musical theater meets drag and okay. it's, it's a comedy right. it's fun and uh theater mavens will uh, recognize everything in it and hopefully a more a wider audience of civilians will also appreciate it it's gotten standing ovations it's running presently it's called which way the stage reviews will come out i think wednesday so we'll find out what the critics do Eh, who cares? <laughs> <Pardon>? <laughs> right. I said, eh, who cares? <laughs> yeah, right. And then we have Soft, which in the, in the other theater, which is written by Donje Don Love and directed by Whitney White. And it's a play about teenage boys and the mas toxic masculinity. And so it's quite wonderful uh, in its sensitivity. It's one of the most beautiful plays I've ever read. Mm -hmm. And so that's happening. That's in tech right now. And that's, its first preview is Thursday night. So we have two theaters and they're working simultaneously. And I can't tell you what it's like to finally be back in the theater in person in front of an audience. It's just mm. fantastic. For two years, we've been, you know, twiddling our thumbs, trying to stay alive. And to all of a sudden have an audience <laughs> laughing and clapping and stomping their feet and, and or actors in the building and students in the building. It's just wonderful. Yeah, there's, just wonderful. Uh, there's, I, you know, I don't know if, well, as you say, f civilians get it, but there is nothing like that feeling of we're sure. all in the same room and we're yeah. all sharing the same thing, whatever it is. Right. And uh, yeah. that energy. Um, I think audience do get it, though. I, the New York theater audiences are quite sharp. There's, <laughs> they're, they yeah. do, they're not, they're not, uh, they're not, they're not, they're not easy. <laughs> no, well, no, but that's, uh, but that keep, that keeps you on your toes. The, Definitely. um, I, uh, yeah, easy audiences, um, that laugh at anything, um, somehow I, you know, you, that's not what we're here for. Oh. Actually, so, one, one of the things that interests me about my own theater and one of the things that interests me about performing new plays is act three. I'm most excuse me, I'm most interested in what happens to the audience after the show. Mm. Because I want them to go away. I mean, I want them to laugh a little, cry a little, they had a marvelous experience and all that stuff. But I want them to talk about or review in their minds what they just experienced, like collectively and individually. Mm. I, you know, I, this is just small personal experience. I was in London many years ago now uh, and saw noises off. Uh, in revival it wasn't the original and it was the audience there is very different because oh, yeah. at the end of them laughing uproariously for the entire play the play ends and they go absolutely silent that's, and, the, one, yeah. that's the one thing i hated about theater after a while after doing it for so many years you know you give your guts <laughs> you just pour your guts out on stage and then within 20 minutes the ghost light comes out and they're all gone it is the most yeah. weirdest walk from the dressing room to the street across that dark stage with nobody in the house. Right. It's very strange. But, I um, it strange. And on the other hand, um, 
the other thing that's really neat about live theater in front of actual people um, is that if you weren't there to see it, you missed it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And the moment's very alive. Yeah. And tomorrow night won't be the same as tonight. That's true, too. That's totally true. Anyway. Well, this has been a wonderful conversation, and I'm just so happy you could uh, spare some time to. It sounds like you're busy getting a new play open and all of that, but um, <laughs> um, and we've got to go have some people go see this. And uh, but thank you so much. And Todd, who I'm hoping is listening, please. Well, he's uh, he. Yeah, there he is. He's supposed he's supposed Always to listening. do he's supposed to do the out commercial. <laughs> then we'll be done. Thank you so much. It has been a pleasure to talk with you and a one joy to see you, Todd. So love you. Yes. Oh. Bobby, thank you so much. Um, so this interview will soon be on our YouTube channel, mm -hmm. um, as are all of A Life in the Arts interviews. And um, with that, we'll actually be running this series through the 16th of June. So those that you can, please join us here Mondays. Um, we're also about to announce our community arts grant application process. Um, so um, again, for everyone who's watching, please visit masterworkarts.org and you can get all the details there. Um, but with that, I'll say a, a really heartfelt thank you, Bobby Lapone, for joining us tonight and sharing your story, a bit of your story with us, just a bit. <laughs> You're just the, one of the most amazing people I know and so super talented. I, um, it's just, um, just an honor to know you. Thank you, Sam, I feel the same. Thanks, and, a, and a pleasure to meet you. Thank okay. you. Have a good evening. All right. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. And...